Today's news, here's Christian again. A joint report by the Royal College of Physicians and the British Society of Gastroenterology claims artificial feeding is being used inappropriately in care homes and hospitals, in some cases to ease the workload of staff. But one care home owner has told Channel 4 News he's incensed and he and several others claim the allegations are unfounded. Care home owners say they've done nothing wrong. None of the 41 residents here, Queen's Court Care Home in Wimbledon, are currently being peg-fed, as it's known. The procedure involves artificial feeding through a tube inserted into the stomach. The manager says she's only had three residents who've been fed this way in the last year. I would try to avoid peg-feeding at all costs. I would ensure that I have enough staff to support our resident, to give them a comfortable environment and allow them to eat peacefully and with dignity and slowly and supported by a dietitian. Tube feeding is meant to be a last resort used mainly for elderly people with dementia who can't swallow anymore. But today's report suggests it's increasingly being used for other reasons like saving time for hard-pressed nursing staff, freeing up hospital beds and even for financial gain. Some health trusts pay care homes more for those residents who are peg-fed because they're seen as needing a higher level of care. But the authors of the report have now backed down on earlier claims that increasing numbers of homes are refusing to take patients unless they're fitted with feeding tubes. We have heard again circumstantially that some um, care homes do consider uh, it more difficult to look after patients if, if a tube isn't in place. But what that shouldn't be interpreted in, in is thinking that care homes are blocking people from coming to them big, unless the tube is in place to make things necessarily easier. But that's not enough to placate care home owners. Queen's Court is one of 250 homes run by Barchester Healthcare. Its founder believes people like him are being blamed for something out of their control. I feel incensed by this report because it's just fundamentally inaccurate. Nursing homes do not make the decision as to whether to introduce artificial feeding or not. It is always a clinical decision. Any old time, any old time. Today's report seems to have created more heat than light, but its authors hope it'll ultimately lead to a reduction in the use of a procedure they believe is highly unpleasant and often unnecessary. Britain negotiates